what I'm doing. I'm a private equity investor. There's been a lot of changing during my my mm. my career in the past 12 months. Um, I, I left a big global firm uh, to set up a new firm. Mm. Um, but I'm also um, involved in another firm uh, as uh, an external director. Okay. So through the three companies that I've been, I've been involved in for the mm. past 12 months, I've had different experience remote okay. um, in terms of remote managing. So maybe I can touch upon, maybe I, okay. can, I can start from there. One more minute. Actually, if uh, Nasser you know, does not show up, and uh, you can use more time, okay? No right. five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, that's fine, okay? Oh. <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> Yes, oh, yeah. no, sir. no, sir. What happened to no, sir, anyway? Okay. Good evening or good afternoon or good night. Uh, welcome to the session and uh, the remote manager and uh, coping post-COVID, okay? It's been almost a year since the pandemic started. Some of us have opted to come back to the office while others continue to work from home, yes, I think it's a good time to review our experience of working remotely. The COVID-19 crisis served as a crash course in how we can work together while remaining physically distant, yes. It wasn't the most enjoyable educational experience, to put it mildly, but it's important that we learn from it. We've been given a glimpse of the work life of the future. That's one of our more positive things to come out of the coronavirus nightmare. Many companies responded to the emergency by asking their employees to work remotely. Nearly a quarter of the American uh, uh, workforces, according to some survey, was already working from home one way or another when the pandemic began. But for most employees, government orders and to self-isolated meant they were working outside the office separately from each other for the first time. We've been hearing from some time that working from home was the wave of the future, but the pandemic made that a present day reality for a lot of us. Many people think it has changed the workplace landscape forever. Okay. Now, post-coronavirus will have to devise and the new paradigms for a corporate strategy while home working. What are the emergent imperatives of Asian CEOs? How will the pressure by active investors alter management goals? Will the workplace become more and egalitarian? Okay. Anyway, and shall we get started? My name is Kenji Okoyama, Vice President of Ritzmaker Asia Pacific University. I'm the chair for this session. For this topic, we are having five, hopefully five, uh, so far four, I think, dominant, distinguished speakers today. I like each of you to make a speech following a self-introduction. Okay, can I ask, for the, for the sake of time, can I ask directly, and uh, Ms. Sveltana uh, Kamishinskaya and uh, to say a few words and uh, to make a speech after your self-introduction. Thank you. So my name is Svetlana Kamashanska. I'm a corporate and business lawyer uh, based in Silicon Valley. My office is in San Francisco. I do work primarily with technology companies. So basically my firm serves uh, tech startups located in Silicon Valley or in mm -hmm. the US, as well as uh, foreign companies coming to the US. We help them to establish business here and kind of grow and develop in Silicon Valley and expand abroad. And definitely I, I'm gonna talk from my experience living in Silicon Valley, as you just mentioned, uh, a lot of workforce used to work from home even before pandemic started. So uh, technology companies in Silicon Valley and San Francisco used to have at least a few days 
uh, allowed at least a few days to work from home to most of employees. But pandemic definitely changed the landscape. And before I get to the point of discussing what is going to happen after pandemic, I think we have to address the issues that we have now. And I'll touch just a few points uh, that are related to my practice and the field I'm working at. So uh, initially, as you know, a lot of uh, companies basically just said, we are letting you work from home and people got a lot of flexibility. Mm. And a lot of people decided, okay, we can go to the country of origin. So as you know, it, it, uh, the U.S., especially Silicon Valley, have a lot of uh, immigrants. And a lot of people decided to go back home and work, like see the family and work from home. Uh, a lot of people decided to relocate to the cheaper states and kind of try to save money because the living cost of living is extremely expensive here. And... <clears throat> On the first glance, it looks cool, but as a consequence of that, we realize that we have to deal a lot with new employment issues. So basically, employers and managers were not ready to deal with floating, as we call floating employees, legal consequences, as well as tax consequences of those decisions. So those risks and kind of implications were not calculated in the first place. Uh, the second unexpected event that happened was closing embassies in different countries due to our political issues. So what happened is that a lot of employees who left, who had employment visas, left the country just to spend a few months abroad and work remotely, are still not able to come back because they cannot stamp the visa. So that's another <laughs> negative consequence of that the third issue I'm observing as a lawyer is the issue of keeping diversity and inclusion part of the employment process going. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like, in, again, in Silicon Valley, we work from home eight months now. A lot of uh, <clears throat> kindergartens do not work. Schools are all remote. So what happened is that women, in most cases, have to take care of families as well as continue working and don't have enough support so what as a result a lot of women had to quit the job so that's that's another challenge we have at this point so basically from the employment stand, standpoint we had a lot of issues we and we still have them we have to deal with and kind of decide and go how we should address tax issues how we should address employment law issues and how we can address and work with board members and managers, the uh, diversity and inclusion component of that. So we have to educate and we have to kind of emphasize. So that's where the weak spot is. So board of directors have can make decisions accordingly. From technology standpoint, I can see that a lot of foreign companies use that as an opportunity. So basically what mm -hmm. happens is my clients, they should not come physically these days, right? So they, they still continue working on a project. They don't need to have those per like meetings in person. And as it was expected before, that company that is looking for funding or moving their headquarters to Silicon Valley in order to raise capital or to find strategic partners here, uh, would have people on the ground and have meetings in person. So now that's not an expectation. So it basically even simplifies the process on one hand. On another hand, uh, if we talk about technology companies, I can see that in some industries, uh, it's hard to uh, assess the risks. So basically the investors do not specifically understand where the market goes. Of course, we understand that the game industry, fintech is growing, right? Medical device, medical space is growing. But there are some in, like some areas of uh, technology development which are unpredictable at this point, And we all have a lot of uncertainty that we have to deal with and have to address. And definitely one of my last points I want to touch on is uh, privacy and security and the use of technology. Mm. <clears throat> uh, 
in general, uh, we do a lot of work educating the board, board members and managers that they have to understand the technology they use because they could be even personally liable for the damage caused by that technology. But these days it's extremely important taking that we have like the US based company can have employees in Europe and the data would f could fall within uh, GDPR regulation and compliance. And uh, we have more people using technology. We have more people who cannot follow the security protocol developed by the company and the potential risks of breaches and as a result damages caused by improper use of technology is huge. So that's something that have to be discussed, I think, uh, by the board members, uh, the managers uh, have to be aware about those mm -hmm. things as well. Thank you very much, Isabel Talana. And as a practitioner, law, you know, legal practitioner, you gave a lot of wide and also in-depth analysis. Very much appreciated. Shall we move on to uh, Atul and uh, Kulkani from India? You are muted. Uh, yes. Uh uh, good afternoon, good morning, good morning to everyone who has joined us and my fellow uh, panelists on this uh, platform. Uh, it's it's obviously a, a topic which is being dis discussed across the globe today. And Svetlana has uh, rightly uh, started uh, and you also in, in your initial remarks mentioned about uh, various challenges that we are facing. Uh, what is now? I mean, why are we discussing now is also an important aspect to me. Uh, over the past eight months, all the managers have reorganized supply chains, set up remote operations, made tough financial decisions, but with vaccine still eluding us hmm. and much feels different. The situation hasn't come to relieve the fatigue that we all are facing. It has definitely unfrozen many aspects of manager's role, CEO, board members, making possible refusing of new and existing elements that could define manager's role for the future. And let me also mention here that whatever we are doing as managers today is not going to be temporary. This is going to be, as we all say, new normal. So we mm. will have to adjust ourselves. This is not just a knee-jerk reaction or response to what pandemic the world is facing. COVID-19 has definitely brought with its pressurized operating environment, the likes of which very few managers have ever experienced. It has necessitated reappraisal of how much is possible and in what time frames. It has forced many personal disclosures at various levels previously which was considered uncomfortable. The five stage R's, according to me, are the path that will lead us into the future. And that is resolve, resilience, return, reimagination, and reform. Let us remember the capital of trust that each one of us as stakeholder has on each one of us is very important and that all managers will have to leverage going forward. We will have to also leverage our network. And when I say network, the lateral communication becomes very important, irrespective of which industry we belong to. And if possible, mostly the non-competitive industrial sectors that we work, lateral communication will give us solutions to many problems that we are facing in our ongoing business activity. We have to also remember that there is huge amount and that is the fact that the pandemic has brought to the to all of us to realize that there is tremendous amount of interconnectedness among the stakeholders in every domain that we are working in. So it is going to be very important for managers how and when 
to reset the expectations of all these stakeholders and also important to note the problem or the challenge according to me is how do we measure progress as we transition through this situation that we are facing mm -hmm. going forward there is going to be a lot more focus on society customers and clients family as vetlana mentioned and employees all these years we managers we thought shareholders are the only stakeholder that we will have to manage with but let's understand and appreciate the fact that shareholder today probably is the last priority and what is important is customers clients family and of all employees have become more important employees need to see that their leadership is vulnerable empathetic and making decisions in accordance with our values which they will have to demonstrate at every stage of their decision making process of course i am not going to go into the details of how digital infrastructure is going to change the way we behave and the way we perform going forward but it is going to be very important the decade of increased globalization has shifted towards outsourcing and manufacturing activities in certain geographies in the world but the managers will have to face the new challenge that whether to do onshoring or nearshoring and build the ecosystem around that we have to also remember the fact that the state interventions that we are seeing across the world is a temporary phenomenon that is mm. not going to be a permanent mm. thing mm. and therefore although the state establishment the governments may support us with different forms of i mean financial packages or etc but that is going to be a very very temporary phenomenon temporary. and they going to move they are going to move away quickly ha uh, this is going to be a true inflation point according to me hmm. i think this pandemic in terms of its implications will be as big as the world war 2 and whatever we have learned through this will help us survive for the next few decades in my opinion we all will have to think big and not just big but we will have to think faster because we have seen during the pandemic things happened which hitherto we thought we will not be able to do as organizations as establishments as industry and therefore this is going to be the new normal according to me our significant one significant aspect of structural change that most managers are currently grappling according to me is how much of a physical footprint their companies need and how that ability and to work virtually and productively will survive and will support us going forward this is a big question that we will all have to address as to what is the real footprint that we need hmm. physical presence of our employees and that is going to be a very very important hmm. what i am sure all managers will face a challenge will be to have a to be list all these years we were always working on to do list all the managers had to do list to focus every day morning we would say i am going to do 1 2 3 4 today but i think the time has forced us to look at to be list for a manager because everyone is looking at their leader and how the leader is going to handle the situation i think this is where to me the manager's role and the challenges for managers are changing and that is how we will have to deal with i'll just close this with in my opinion the 10 important points which are not applicable obviously to every company hmm. but in in some percentage or the other they will be applicable to all first is think of the return as a muscle focus on high impact actions rebuild for speed reimagine the workforce from top down okay Make bold portfolio moves reset technology plans rethink of global footprint 
take the lead on climate and sustainability think about the role of regulation and government make purpose as part of everything that we do hmm. the purpose is going to be important in my opinion and i'll close saying not only do the leaders need to act now they need to act boldly as covid has made very clear changing the world for the better is good not only for the society but also for our businesses thank you gentlemen for your patience hearing thank you and atul you did a self introduction my name is atul gulkarni i live in, in in india in mumbai i am a management professional and i, I am into infrastructure domain transport infrastructure primarily and i also work with academic institutions as a member mm. of board of governors of prestigious indian institute of management and advisor to government of india on infrastructure thank, thank you very you. much svetlana you did a self introduction okay thank you shall we move on to uh, the third speaker and uh, from spain and uh, miss mr antonio cantalapidoa okay good morning to all thank good morning thank you very much thanks so much to all my fellow um uh video call mates <laughs> remote mates <laughs> in this in this panel so um yeah uh, my name is antonio I, i was born in madrid so i'm a serial entrepreneur i was part of the founding team of uh, of uh, my taxi now well known in europe as a free now uh, oh really yeah sold to to daimler to mercedes benz and now it's uh, it's mercedes benz and bmw uh, company uh wow. in terms of mobility services only uh and now i'm uh, i'm leading a founder and a ceo of a fintech company the name is weavers and um and i mean uh, <clears throat> actually uh, my my place is madrid but i'm i'm uh, managing different markets we are 10 people uh we have presence in france in portugal in italy in spain in uh um UK and and Brussels and Belgium um in the future i think in 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 uh 9 or 10 months uh, we're going to open up in hong kong to manage mm. uh, asia asia operations mm. uh, mainly we we are uh, automatizing the reimbursement of uh bat so uh, you know the the tax free and also uh uh doing um digital payments cashbacks and this kind of uh things weird things <laughs> so i'm 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 used to 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 managing people across markets uh also i'm 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 used yeah. to working uh, uh this way since 2006 <laughs> at least mm. when for blackberry and managing 200 people across markets across uh southern europe uh mainly sales people so and uh, so to me it's kind of shocking uh, how uh, many companies uh, even after the 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 lockdowns you know uh, due to the covid-19 are are kind of uh, unable to to manage uh, teams or or working remotely etc so um because of course it's a real challenge it's a real challenge for managers and also for 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 leaders because it's 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 quite complicated if you are not um if you don't really are able to um to to use uh tools because many people think even today that a remote manager is someone who just have a computer and just connect uh using zoom or google meet etc and no it is is beyond that you need to also be able to be collaborative using uh, you know uh, tools like trello or basecamp or or uh, or uh, slack or jira for engineers and and to really have presence there and to be able to to uh, manage uh, the time efficiently so that that's why is is really um is really a, a challenge right mm -hmm. so uh, but for sure i think it, it uh, in terms of uh, if we if we um, talk about you know the the future of smart cities etc you know um uh, cities based on uh, really intensive in technology we need to to think about how to cut down on on 
on on pollution, cut down on on you know uh, you know the the people commuting, etc. And, and and I think it's it's uh, this is unstoppable. So mm. so uh, I think in the end now I'm also investor. So I'm a business angel, and if I analyze a company and I see they're unable to to uh, to work remotely, to me it's a symptom that uh, that company probably is going to disappear. Hmm. Okay. So because, uh, okay. It's going to disappear for sure mm. if they're not able to really massively use tools to 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 be. Um, you know, living, living uh, in, in the department, etc. So, and, 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 and for sure, I'm not going to invest. So I think companies, it's like with clients, when we talk about you need to be able to offer the, the users, the clients, um, you know, uh, a wide variety of channels for them to, to, to buy, you know, uh, e-commerce or, you know, they, they can drop by into the, the retailer Oh, but but uh, you need to to give them options, and you mm. cannot really, uh, cut that uh, options to them. It's the same with with workers. I think your companies are not going to be able to attract talent if they are not really, really, really ready to be working remotely and flexible. So uh, a worker should be able uh, to to be uh, dropping by the office um, forty minutes, but then working uh, from home or working. Uh, using a, a smartphone or different gadgets when 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 they are uh, planning, you know, or or flying to to other other places, etc. Also to to reconcile, you know, their 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 uh, you know the, the business life with the family life. If not, many people is not going to be working for that company. Mm. So uh, so for that for that reason, I think. Um, it's also important not only the the you know the the the, the technical team you know uh, ready for this the whole company from the ceo to the to the first entry level person even i think uh, it's going to be necessary for them to be able to to to, to code um you know because if if not i think you are not really involved in 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 uh, in the daily activity of the company because the majority of companies are going to be mm, uh, tech companies uh, in the coming years so in and, and again it's not about Using all the you know the social networks or just connecting to Zoom, and it, it's 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 what happens with the majority of people right now. So you you, you should be able uh, to to uh, to program into using uh, a Python R for for a wide variety of activities. That means you are going to be really able to be collaborative with the rest of the people of the tech company. If you're just able to connect to Zoom and and have some meetings. That's not really remote working. That's not really remote work. I understand that massively mm -hmm. uh, now for, for the majority of people, it's it's okay. Okay, you you are able to remote uh, to remotely working because you're able to to manage Zoom in this kind of tools, but it's beyond 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 that. Mm. So so let's see what happens. I think probably of course Silicon Valley or or some areas are are, are really ready for this. But I don't think I think we are still far from 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 uh, from from this uh, idealistic moment in which the majority of the population are going to be ready to be working uh, um, uh, collaboratively speaking and being uh, effective because it's, it's another it's another key parameter. So many people is now connecting from home, etc. But are they really productive? Are they really psychologically ready to be doing this for a long time? Not only for a short period of time, because we are in a in a, a pandemic future. But then many of them are going to be kind of a requesting to to come back to the same uh, juncture. No, no, no. This is this is here forever, unstoppable. And and again, and to finish the, this. Uh, it's a symptom if a company is not the whole no. company, not only the CEO or just uh, several managers, to really be effectively working remotely and flexible, etc. It's a symptom that the company is going to disappear because the company is not is not profitable and the company is not mobile first, is not digital, and it's going to disappear for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much for your very provocative and uh, opinion. I like that. But anyway, thank you very much. Shall we move on to uh, a representative from Japan, and Mr. Motoya Kitamura? And uh, please uh, make a speech after, you know, following your uh, self-introduction. Sure, sure. Um, I'll be delighted to. So I'm Motoya Kitamura. I'm based in Tokyo. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a private equity investor. That could mean a lot of things. I, I mm. think it's, uh, I think it's important to grasp what kind of office circumstances that I've I worked. I have worked in the,、uh, the past ten years. I've been mainly based in Tokyo. Before that, I was based in Hong Kong. But in, while、mm. I was in Tokyo, while I am in Tokyo, I've always worked as a satellite office person. So usually, in, in private equity, if you have an Asia head, it's either Singapore or Hong Kong, and you have a chunk of team members there.、Um, and if you have some. Some some abundancy, you have satellite offices in places like Seoul or Tokyo or Sydney or Mumbai, right? That's how an Asian private equity asset manager is set up. So, so usually,、um, if you are based in Tokyo, you would have to com- communicate with your、um, colleagues、uh, remotely. That that comes part of your job description,、uh, to be honest. So for the past ten years, I've been. I've been working with my colleagues mostly on a remote basis.、Mm-hmm. So、um, even even as a senior member, my my associates were based in places like Taipei or Hong Kong, and they would report to me. They would do work for me, and I would I would、uh, give you know、um, or sometimes orders, advice,、uh, and and some guidance to people who are around me. What's different now、um, compared with the norm? That I've experienced in the last ten、uh, years up to up to this、uh, April was that at key moments you meet with them face to face, right?、Mm-hmm. We in, in private equity we have this thing called offsite meetings. I'm sure you have it in other other industries as well. Offsite meeting is where you where you physically meet up、um, once a year and you you talk about the, the company issues and and budgets. And strategies, but the, but the real purpose is to to get together face to face and get get to know each other.、Um, while I was working for an Australian investment bank about ten years ago, we met up in Sydney every, once every year. Everybody from the world,、um, the U.S. team, the London team, the German team, the Asian team, got together in in Australia, and we met face to face, and we spent a week there. Just to just to meet with just for the sake of meeting face to face, and that was extremely important. Even、mm-hmm. when we were, so so we don't have that now, and that kind of spells inconvenience now. So if you're conducting due diligence on a fund or a firm, it's it's not that difficult to 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 go through the exercise、um, under the remote management situation. All you have to do is. Share the, the data, the work report、uh, through the website, and you, the only thing you have to do is connect through a, through a teleconference or a video conference to discuss. And that's what I've been doing for the last ten months. Um, um, another change was has been、uh, with the external、uh, regarding external communication. As an investor, you have to meet up with es- investment destinations. You have、mm. to meet up with private equity fund managers. You have to meet up with company fund managers. You have to meet with brokers who introduce deals to us.、Um, and、uh, most of the time, you we've always done it remotely because they are based in places like Hong Kong or Singapore,、um, and you, you only meet with them face to face when when they are flying in and out.、Um, so that's that's been our norm. But、uh, it's very hard to make a final decision. Without a face-to-face meeting, you can you can get a you can get a feel and you can you can do the analysis and you can you can do the numbers and and you you know what it what it is. But then, if do you have the guts to to cross the final bridge? Now that's a different question because you're going to invest in a private equity. If you're going to invest in in an asset, you have to hold it for a, a long period of time, three years, five years. If you're investing in a fund, ten years. So. You, you you wouldn't feel comfortable without 
a physical meeting. And that has been a different norm uh, before this COVID-19 era. And I hear that many investors are having problems there, which leads to an inve- inevitable but not healthy solution, which is to just invest in companies or funds that you had or, or you have already known for a long time. If you're, if you're going to invest in something that you haven't, you're not familiar with and you have never had a face to face meeting, investors do, uh, hesitate. And I think that's what we're seeing, uh, now. Um, one more point. Um, the, this, this remote managing, uh, practice has been pretty much common, um, in Japan since April. And mm-hmm. Japan, um, professor, you know that Japan, takes a lot of pride in meeting with people face to face. Uh, we have a Japanese saying uh, called, show your face, <laughs> show your face and now you're in. So that's, that's like a mannerism. That's almost like a mannerism. I, and I can see that, that many uh, big Japanese companies are, are deviating away from that business community. And, you know, I, I think, uh, during the, 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 the spring and summer time, people were making an ex- excuse saying, okay, this is a special time. But now I think I, I see you know, the most conservative companies and most conservative pension fund investors getting really comfortable with not meeting face to face. And that's, I think, is a difference that, um, that, that I kind of uh, uh, appreciate rather than depreciate. It, some people call it the biggest black ship in Japan. <laughs> in the business business practice, you know, black ship is often uh, a, a comparison for the uh, uh, Commodore Perry who came to Japan and opened up the opened up the um, trade relationship um, in the 19th century. But but in Japan, we're seeing a lot of that that change, uh, and I find it very refreshing. So I'll so, I'll stop here. We only have nine minutes to go, so I'll stop here and and let uh, the professor. Thank you. Thank you, Motoya. And uh, yes, I agree, actually. I noticed that kind of trend in Japan, too. Okay, last but not least, and uh, Nasa Munji. Uh, yeah, what, I'm um, so sorry. Uh, I that's okay, so that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. I didn't get sound, etc. That's right. But most the no, most important pa- person comes last, anyway. <laughs> Go on. And after your sure self-introduction, self-introduction, please say something. I'm not sure. Anyway, all I, uh, because I don't know what has been said before. Okay, but that's okay. Say my own experience. Yes. Um, uh, you know, I sit on many boards and I chair a number of companies, mm. uh, a bank, uh, Tata Motor Finance, uh, uh, et cetera. I was shocked at how well the remote system has actually worked. Mm. Uh, You're shocked. Sure? I'm actually shocked. Because I think the efficiency of our board meetings, the attendance of our board meetings, 100%. Uh, <laughs> people don't have to travel and uh, they can attend and we can, we can actually uh, fix appointments much better. The actual work that we've been done in terms of customer satisfaction in Tata Motor Finance, let's say, new product development, resource mobilization, everything has moved as efficiently as it would have otherwise, probably more so because it required less time and people were available when they needed to be available, including the bank. Uh, my bank has, I was really worried about what's going to happen to deposits, what's going to happen to uh, recoveries, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I find that everything has worked brilliantly. Uh, uh, it's all worked. Mm-hmm. So I think basically all I'm saying is that this COVID, which stopped the world, has actually got us forcefully to use the technologies that were already available and to use it appropriately. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that experience, that learning, mm-hmm. is already now internalized in, in us. So if you ask me, how, is thing, how are things going to change as we move forward? Mm-hmm. Um, I think... Um, uh, I think um, this this whole issue of nine to five office centric uh, work with commute consequences and all of that is going to be under under big question mark. Um, uh, what is certain 
is that there'll be shifts in distributed work uh, 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 and a forced opportunity to reimagine everything about how we do our daily jobs and how we run companies. There could be a hybrid process of how much to see each other face to face and how much can we work remotely. For example, on a board, I think if you have seven board meetings a year, maybe three or four can be remote and you can have two in person, at least in strategy meetings or uh, budget meetings, et cetera, et cetera. But on routine meetings, why travel and why waste so much time? So I think um, uh, the, the whole hybrid model is going to come through in some form. We don't know mm-hmm. what form. Mm-hmm. Uh, employees also have new choices and where they want to live with their remote, uh, mm-hmm. et cetera. Um, why would you want to live, you know, in, in city centers cramped? You probably have a bigger home outside the in the country with a study and with an office so you can get on with your life. Um, so the even structural things, even the real estate market is going to be badly affected because downtown corporate headquarters, people moving in and out, all the restaurants around it, all the social activity around um, city center. What's going to happen? Um, um, because it won't be as vital as it was in the past, certainly. So things are going to change. Um, The biggest issue is how do we maintain office culture? Because I'm a great believer in building culture in organizations. And culture means human interaction. It means working together, meeting, understanding each other. Um, So... um, So on one side, I feel that we will eliminate a lot of inefficient processes, ineffective meetings, bureaucracy, all that will actually be improved dramatically Mm. as we move forward Mm. uh, using the uh, new technological possibilities. Mm. But I'm I'm also certain that things may not change as much as we think. Uh, because of our social character. Uh, People are social beings. And in a sense, I think the hybrid model will be weighted much more in terms of social interaction uh, than we, when we think, sometimes we think. Uh, uh, We'll be more efficient using technology, but we will also be very social. For example, engagement is very, very, very critical. Um, uh, uh, Um, uh, let me uh, 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 leaving home also is very important for people you know being cooped up with the family all the time Uh, this idea of I've got to go to work you know that concept leaving the house Mm. is an important element how much would you want to just sit in the house uh, uh, in in this Uh, remote is not a substitute for face-to-face uh, uh, things. For example, the social interactions over dinner, over cocktail parties, etc., cetera, um, even at the board level, at the uh, engagement level, at people. For, 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 pe- for a lot of people, friendships are made at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least the single, the single young, uh, you know, entrep- uh, young um, uh, employee, less an IT guy, you know, who's 20-year-old, 22-year-old, where does he make his friends? It's okay. at work. You know, it's got to be, it's got to, it's got to work. So going to work um, is going to be uh, certainly something that will continue. Um, and being with colleagues is an essential part of organizational culture. Um, what sort of organization are you and how are you going to push it forward is a social thing. So in a, in a, in summary, I think it's a combination of efficiency as well as social engagement. Okay. Uh, uh, how much, how, how will that hybrid work? Anyway, Nasa, thank you very much. You go very well. And uh, yes, and uh, hybrid combination of two things is the kind of answer to that. Or is there any comments? Additional comments? Anyone? Yeah, I just wanted to yeah, pick sure. back a little uh-huh. bit. And yes. share what is going on uh, in Silicon Valley. So we had that hybrid. Right now we are all remote. And what I want to say is uh, all corporations are struggling with efficiency, kind of piggyback on Antonio's points. Efficiency is very low. 
and LinkedIn, Facebook, Google are restructuring offices in order to be able to maintain the social distance and let people in because even highly developed technology companies, big corporations cannot manage that fully, like at the same level of efficiency to stay remote. So I think, yeah, that you both of you are right. <laughs> right. Thank Let's, you. And, and any additional comments? People, student, okay. And uh, Atul, you want to say something? No. no. We are fine. I think uh, what uh, Nasir mentioned is, is, is possibly the culture. I mean, the organization culture is going to be very important. And yeah, I, culture. I, I, I also kind of uh, highlighted that. And people are going to see at the manager, I mean, the leader, uh, how uh, as a person he is going to uh, address all of those challenges and then people are going to follow them. So I think this is going to be very, very important for every individual at uh, every stage, no matter what. I mean, whether he's a manager or a CEO or a board member, and he will have to make adjustments to all these challenges uh, they, they are looking at. And I'm sure uh, this will actually create uh, a new style of leaderships. And I'm looking forward to those uh, uh, new emerging leadership styles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I don't know what audience and how audience learned it. And uh, myself, I learned a lot. And I want to pass what you say to my students. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I want to see you someday soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, stay safe wherever you. you are. Thank bye. you very Thank much. Same, same to you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.